Just over a week left for Ohio State's spring football season. The good news is next Saturday's forecast in Columbus is calling for highs in the mid-60s and just a slight chance of precipitation for the spring game. Well, night and day. That's how today Buckeyes quarterbacks coach and co-offensive coordinator Tim Beck described the difference for him from last year to this. And after coming under quite a bit of heat for his play calling, particularly in the Michigan State loss, Beck embraces this season's permanent change with Ed Warner joining him upstairs, the same combination that led to blowout wins over Michigan and Notre Dame to finish last season. Earlier this week, Urban Meyer discussed the Buckeyes' progress through this critical part of the offseason. We had a long discussion about that last year. Last week was about chaos. You have 3,000 students in there, loud noise the entire time. It's screaming, yelling, and we on purpose try to create situations, environments. You know, this I'll probably shut down practice for everybody on Thursday and Saturday this week. Just because I want it extremely quiet. I want to, we have to get better now and find out. We still have a hard time putting together our depth chart. So, yes, to answer your question, we have done that. Has it been successful? You know, it remains to be seen. But every, there's a theme to every week that we do around here. And the first one was install spring break. Next one was first to normal and, and just getting used to practice. Last week was creating as much chaos as we could throughout the week of practice to watch guys respond. And then this one, just because of where we're at, shutting it all down and finding out, you know, we have to make some hard decisions coming up here this week. By Saturday, there's some guys are going to play and some not going to play. The offensive line is certainly an area where that depth chart needs to be settled, but not at quarterback. Urban Meyer continues to marvel at JT Barrett. I don't really have to preach much of JT. He's smarter than I am. I mean, he's smarter than our staff. And I, I'm not saying that he's a very smart player. So I, I, I don't preach at him very much. He understands the big picture of everything. And, and we have the 2000 rep club, you know, where guys are played so much football that why would you put them in harm's way when, you know, Pat Elfline's just, his biggest thing is learning a new position and getting as many reps at his, to fix his weaknesses. And same with uh, Gary Ann Conley, same with Raquan McMillan, same with uh, uh, Billy Price. Those are just guys off the top of my head that played a lot of football for us. With over a dozen Buckeyes likely to be drafted later this month, there will be plenty of new faces in the mix. But those departing the program are still positively impacting the team. And the good thing is they're really helping our young guys. You know, I watch them. You know, Mike Thomas doesn't come here to, he comes here to help coach. You know, I see Eli Apple out there talking to Damon Arnett. I think that's a big part of what separates us from a lot of places. Those kids all come back with the ownership. Taylor Decker's here for a lot of reasons, one to lift and train, but also to, uh, Help uh, Isaiah Prince and Jamarco Jones. And that's when you got a good pro. That's when you know you got a, a good thing going. Zeke was out here the other day, and he was spending time with Mikey Weber and Briante. As for replacing Darren Lee, the playmaking linebacker who emerged a little under two years ago, Meyer sees many of those same traits in Jerome Baker. Yeah, Jerome Baker has a skill set. You know, the early's in first, but because he, he's had a little more anticipation, doesn't have the same skill set. But he's early's a pretty good player. Meyer is confident the team will be just fine in the fall because their depth is getting near the point he would like to see. Someone asked about the quarterback situation and how terrible that was last year. I thought it was fantastic. You have two great players that you're, you know, so I, I much rather have enough that where you're having all constant meetings about who should start as opposed to the, the guy that number two is not near what number one is because if something happens to number one, you're, your team goes like this. So. I think the answer is real, real obvious for a coach is we'd rather have a lot of depth uh, answers and guys fighting for spots. That's when you have a great, great team. When you know that Raquan McMillan's almost as good as Curtis Grant, that's when life is really good as a coach. You can say, okay, go on in there, and it doesn't have a drop-off. Not real easy, though. In Columbus, Mark Koontz, Sports Report.